And tonight on Joy News Prime, drama, chaos and arrest at NPP constituency elections as some aggrieved members vow to vote against their party. <laughs> Stay with us as we bring you uh, vital updates across the country. President uh, Kufado says the country should be prepared to make necessary constitutional amendments to meet contemporary needs. It was the Supreme Court on two occasions, rather than the streets, that validated its result. We are arguably the most stable democracy in West Africa. And for fear of losing their pregnancies, many pregnant women in the Ahafo region refuse to accept COVID-19 vaccines. Effective of the number of months of pregnancy, or technically the gestational uh, age, can't get vaccinated with Pfizer or Moderna. That these and vaccines are safe and will not affect the outcome of the pregnancy. And don't forget that at 8, I'll be handing it over to Oriku and Charles for Prime Business and Prime Sports. Oriku, what's coming up in the world of sports? Well, it's been all smiles for Liverpool fans as German coach Jürgen Klopp has agreed to extend his stay at the Merseyside Club by two years. And so essentially, he'll be staying there up until the year 2020. In the bulletin as well, parts of Accra flooded after early morning rains. Oh, my fear is that next time it will be worse because, you know, the listen right now, the, uh, my fear is that even one side of the wall, I think, is weakening because it went to about knee level at that point. So any heavy downpour, it will just erode closer to the building. Well, these and many more are coming up shortly. This is your home of independent, fearless and credible journalism. My name is Blessed Sugan. Stay for details. Also tonight, some aggrieved NPP delegates at the Okaikoi South constituency have vowed to vote against their party. The reason is that their names have been expunged from the voters' register despite being qualified to partake in the electoral process which took place today. The delegates claim the MP for the area, Dakoa Newman, and some regional executives colluded to remove their names from the register. According to him, over 400 names uh, have been replaced with persons uh, who are not from the constituency. We'll hear from them shortly, but earlier today, the election was nearly disrupted as confusion marked the process, leading to fisticuffs between some of the aggrieved supporters and the police. My colleague, Kwesi Parker Wilson, has the rest of the story. <laughs> So what's what's happening here is that the the delegates the delegates have blocked the vehicle conveying the electoral commission officials to the venue. They have said that this election will not be conducted, and so even though the police is escorting the electoral commission to the venue where the elections will be held. The delegates have blocked the vehicle, asking that this election will not be conducted and that the EC should return to their offices because this election today will not, will not, will not be conducted. Uh, uh, boss, boss, I mean, this is a vehicle. Uh, and and why, are you, why are you stopping the vehicle, sir? We, we, we just want the right thing to be done. This is an election. These people came to us that they are going to maintain everyone. And here lies the case. We have the video evidence. And now they've taken our names out. Look at the number of people here. And you expect us to let the election go on. Never. The right thing must be done. The right thing must be done. So, but, but you can't block. The police says that this election, yes. the party has given them today to conduct the election. Today. So you can't block the, the, the EC. What we know is that we are delegates and we are expected to vote on Saturday. So why are they coming now? What is the agenda? I see. Uh, in favor of anything. Uh, you want peace. You want peace. You cannot say that these vehicles should run through us. You cannot say that these vehicles should run through us. What is the agenda? So the police, the police is here. The police is moving. The police is pushing them away. The police is pushing them away. Paving way, paving way. The paving way for, for the vehicle to run through. So very chaotic situation here. 
chaotic situation here at the Prince of Peace School where the NPP is holding its delegates constituency election and that is you can see the force you can see you can see the reaction of the police and the delegate pushing them shoving them and the vehicle equally and uh, moving slowly gaining access to the entrance so this is the chaotic situation here at the uh, prince of peace prince of peace uh, school where the npp is expected to hold their delegate conference the, the, some of the delegates are in in a, in a fisticuffs with, 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 the, with the police right now, paving way for the EC to move. So clearly, clearly, this is the situation. This is the situation. This this man has held the police leg, and this this is the chaotic situation here. The chaotic situation here at at the Prince of Peace. Finally, 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 the vehicle has gained access. Finally. The vehicle has gained access and the vehicle has entered. What it means is that the election will be held. And one has been arrested. One man has been arrested and he has been taken into the police vehicle. So he has been arrested. He has been arrested. He has been arrested and asking the police to handcuff him. Amid the chaos, the police arrested five persons for obstructing the duties of the men in uniform. ACP Fatcha Kumi has been speaking to Joy News. They are raising issues of the uh, election coming on on Saturday and not today, and that some people's name have been removed from the register. And then they went on to also say that they've taken the matter to court and there is injunction. And what I was trying to tell them is that if they have injunction and they go ahead, the party goes ahead to conduct the election, they have every right to go and cite the party for contempt. If some people's name have been removed from the register as they are alleged, that is also a basis for them to go to court and, you know, channel their grievances. At the end of the day, we are not expecting them to be physical or obstruct anybody who is coming to uh, cast his or her vote. We are here, as I said, to maintain law and order. And therefore, if anybody thinks he, he, he is too big, we are here. We will see who is big and at the end of the day, who, is, who will be able to maintain law and order so far as this election is concerned. And now listen to the delegates threatening to vote out the NPP in 2024. One one. We are not maintaining that for here. It's in our so you vote, you vote against your candidate. Yes. 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 Well, so let's go live now to one of the voting centers at Bubuashi for an update. Kwesi Paka Wilson is joining us live via Zoom from there. Paka, bring us uh, up to speed on the latest uh, from the center. Bless up. The situation in the morning is now calm. The delegates have gone through the process successfully. They have they are done voting, and that the uh, electoral commission is currently counting the ballot and will soon declare the result of this election. And so the situation is that the delegates informed and norm after the police arrested about five individuals who were fomenting trouble uh, early this morning. And I can see about 30 police officers detailed to the grounds to ensure that 
uh, the receipt as the counting is going on. And subsequently, when the, the results are declared, because they do not want any surprises where some delegates will misbehave after the declaration of the results. So they have been stationed at vantage points and ensuring that they do what is right. Uh, Honorable, uh, the lawyer Frank Davis has been here this morning. Uh, he's been monitoring events, and I'm happy to have him here with me. Uh, Council, you're live on Jordi. Briefly, what's been your own assessment of this process, sir? Well, good evening to your cherished listeners. It's, it, it, it's been splendid, mm. but for just a small pocket of disturbance early on in the morning, those involved have been picked up by the police, so they are in police custody now. But it's been orderly, smooth, a lot of cooperation from the delegates and the aspirants or contestants, and it, 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 it's been excellent. Hmm. And for me, I'm curious to know, what's your interest in this election? Because there's election. I don't You're have, counsel for the party. I don't have any interest. <laughs> I'm the national rep. Okay. We can't quit that constraint. So hmm. I'm compelled to be here. Hmm. But so I'm here to supervise and monitor and report to the party. I see. But, but finally for me, with the balance that marred the piece of the election from the start, what do you make of it? Unfortunate that the delegates going forward what are the assurances that uh, this will not be care? I, I am um, inclined to believe that as we mature in politics, this kind of behavior should not be condoned. I mean, if your name is not in a constituency apple, you wait and come and pick it at the, at the, at the, at the election venue, the, the, the polling station, I mean, the center of the election. Meanwhile, there was a directive that constituency album should be displayed in a constituency office. So if you wanted to be sure that your name was in the register, yeah, you should have seen your constituency album. What, 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 what's, what's that supposed to mean? It's either your name is in the register or it's not. If your name is not there, it's unfortunate. What, 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 what would anybody gain by cheating unfairly? You know, they should have channeled their grievance early on, so that the party will address it. But you don't wait when it's an election time and you come here and say your name is not in the register. Who's going to restore you onto the register? We can't do that. So I, I, I only advise my party people that we, we, you, see, you don't gain any notoriety for, for people seeing you as rowdy. Now that you have come to misbehave, you are in police custody, your people are here. So what do you say to yourself? And, and finally, for me, if some of them uh, who uh, their names are not captured on the register are threatening to vote against the party, making it difficult for you to break the egg, what will be your response to them? These things we care. After a day or two, they'll come back. Mm. They'll come back. I mean, you, you get pain about something. Right. But I mean, after a while. They are just empty threats. Oh, I'm, I won't say empty threats. They are just, they are just, they are just people who want to vent out their frustration. But apart from that, they'll come back. Don't worry. I thank you very much. Lawyer Frank Davis there, a lawyer for the government NPP. Uh, he's um, excited about the process, indicating that it's been splendid because he's the national rep supervising over this election. So, um, pleasant. The counting is still underway. Very soon, the Electoral Commission will declare the result and we will know uh, who has won the constituency chairman and the other positions that many other candidates are contesting for. Uh, well, Parker Wilson there promises to be a very long night. In fact, we're expecting the exercise to continue through uh, uh, to tomorrow. Uh, we'll be watching that for you in the Ashanti region as well. Uh, there was chaos in the Subin constituency uh, as some aspirants for executive positions in the NPP tried to stop the election. Uh, they accused the party's leadership of breaching internal processes to hold a delegates conference. Already some aggrieved persons uh, who are not satisfied with the polling station elections uh, have been placed, have actually placed an injunction uh, on the constituency polls. Aspiring chairperson Mark Chase says the date for the election was set in less than 24 hours, denying them, uh, the voters, uh, to register. Yesterday, there was a meeting. They called that meeting emergency meeting. What emergency meeting was that? The emergency was, we have to uh, hold the elections tomorrow. Not giving a chance to speak to one delegate. No, I don't have the album. And I don't even have a polling agent, all right, to write my results for me. 
Okay, so how do I go on? Is that the way in the, uh, elections are conducted in our system in NPP? No, that's not the way. Not a single delegate. Not been given the chance to speak to one delegate. Okay, I just had the chance this morning to enter one of the buses, all right, to speak to the delegates. Okay, and that's about it. I mean, I mean, is that the way elections are conducted? The election, to conduct election, doesn't fall on just one day, the day that you're going to vote. No. It goes through a lot of processing, and the major, the major role, all right, in that process is your campaign. Okay? That's where you know that, yes, I have done work, all right, that is going to put me here or there. Well, there's more also in the northern region. Polling station executives uh, in the Yendi constituency who turned out uh, this morning to vote at the constituency elections have expressed some appointment over the suspension of elections in that part of the country. A polling station officer at the Yendi Senior High School electoral area, Abdullahi, uh, told us that uh, they were notified after they arrived there at the polling station. Somewhere around five... PM the grounds for the election to come up this morning. Once it has happened to be one of an election area that I'm a, a police chief secretary. In fact, we have not been given any information about the suspension of this election. And uh, all preparation was done, expenses was made. And uh, just this morning that we have been told, the general secretary of the party has called the election to suspension. Ideally, I think the party has its own structures. And uh, I don't think the structures have to be tampered by individuals who wants to uh, actually have their own interests. The structure has to abide by everybody in the constituency. We should be prepared to make the necessary amendments to the constitution to meet contemporary needs. That's according to President Akufado, who in a televised address today underscored the need to sustain Ghana's democratic governance system. The nation is today marking 30 years since the fourth Republican constitution was adopted through a referendum. Delivering a message from Jubilee House earlier today, the president called on Ghanaians to resist calls for military dictatorship. We've had five presidents in the history of the Fourth Republic with peaceful transfers of power from a governing to an opposition party on three separate occasions. Even when there was disagreement with the outcome of an election, it was the Supreme Court on two occasions rather than the streets that validated its result. We are arguably the most stable democracy in West Africa. On this day, the 30th anniversary of the referendum, whose votes ushered in the Fourth Republic, I urge all of us to renew trust in our democracy and bear in mind at all times the off-sighted statement that the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. I say so because there are some who for their own parochial and selfish interests would want to see a return to the dark days of authoritarian rule, simply because, with no respect for the Ghanaian people, they are either unwilling to subject themselves or their vision to the open scrutiny of the Ghanaian people, or because they know they will be rejected by the Ghanaian people and thus seek a shortcut to office and power. Let us strengthen our resolve to resist such persons for our common good. Asking the question how relevant will a constitutional change be to the security and stability of the nation? Joining us via Zoom now is a security consultant, Richard Kumado, who is uh, on with us. Thank you, sir, for your time. So here we are today. The president believes that Ghanaians uh, are experiencing by far the best democracy. How do we improve that? and sustain it in the wake of uh, receding trends in the Saab region. Richard, you'd have to unmute, you'd have to unmute for, for us to hear you. Right. 
So uh, Richard Kumado uh, has been, uh, of course, monitoring the speech today by the president, and uh, he's joining us with his perspective as well. Richard, I was asking about the relevance of this constitutional change to the security and stability of our nation. What's your take on that? I think I agree with the president by saying that democracy has far been preferred in most parts of the world as compared to regimes being led by coup d'etat. And in recent times where coup d'etat as a threat has predominantly dominated the landscape in West Africa, I can understand the sentiments of the president that we need to be resolved in our determination of maintaining the democracy we have enjoyed in the Fourth Republic. What the president also said was where he made mention of the constitutional review. This has been the campaign of certain people over the years. If you remember, Professor Tikuba has had a whole review about the constitution, but then the political will of politicians or the political elite to go through the referendum in maintaining certain portions of the constitution has been a major setback. Mm. Certain individuals have taken it on, and by their words or by their choices or by their activities, it right. has landed them directly in confrontation with the police. So I'm happy the president has raised the issue again. And I think we should start the discussions and see which aspects of the constitution we think we can do some. Mm. Okay, so if, if we are to make any changes really, Richard, where should we start from and how do we end, I guess? I have a particular little uh, issue when it comes to the constitution and where people complain that there's so much power given to the president. In all presidential democracies, remember that there are various democracies in the world and there are various types of democracies in the world. I ask a simple question, Paul Kagame in Uganda, is he running a democratic state? Is he a dictator? Is he a democrat? And today the world is running to Paul Kagame. And even in Africa, where there are issues in governance and leadership, we all run to Paul Kagame. But you know the story of Paul Kagame. If you look at Sankara before he died, is he a dictator? Is he a democrat? And I think there are various forms of democracies in the world today. We need to play safely as a nation. One of the areas I would like to consider when it comes to the constitution is the appointing authority of the president, where virtually the president has to appoint everybody, particularly into the security agencies and the due influence of presidential power over the security agencies. I think it's an area we need to look at it. If we want to sustain this democracy, we are so happy to have. All right, then, we'll leave it here for now. Richard Kumado is a security consultant. Still on the president, he's reiterating his commitment to the repeal of Article 55.3 of the Constitution, which will pave way for local assembly elections to be held on partisan basis. He further promised to pursue a national consensus on the matter. Fellow Ghanaians, one primary goal of the Constitution was to decentralize the structure of governance in Ghana so the government would be brought closer to the people. One fundamental barrier to the realization of this goal has to do with the ramifications of Article 55, Clause 3 of the Constitution, which currently bars political parties from involvement in district assembly elections and local government. The attempt I made in 2019 to repeal this provision and allow for the participation of political parties in local government was aborted because of the lack of a broad national consensus when the opposition NDC signaled its inability to back the repeal. It was and continues to be my view that the repeal or modification of an entrenched clause of the Constitution should attract widespread support to make it acceptable and healthy for the body politic. We should further bear in mind the strong attachment of the Ghanaian people to multi-party democratic elections. On the average, the turnout for national elections in the Fourth Republic has been 72%, one of the highest in the world, whilst the turnout for the allegedly non-partisan local government elections has always hovered around 
30%. I've said it before, and I'll repeat it. I will continue to work for an extensive national consensus on this issue. And should such a consensus be attained for the repeal of Article 55, Clause 3 of the Constitution, and an agreement reached for political parties to participate in and sponsor candidates for election to district assemblies, at any point during my remaining tenure of office as President of the Republic, the matter will be brought back again to the front burner of our public discourse for the necessary action. And now, although the constitution has served the country well, some governors experts have called for its review, citing some deficiencies. Speaking at the launch of this year's celebration, uh, Dr. Deputy Chairperson of Operations uh, at the NCC, Samuel Ekuama, says that the commission will engage stakeholders as well as the general public to debate the amendment of the 1992 constitution. In celebrating the Constitution Week, which we at the NCC instituted in 2001, we are trying to go back to revisit this agenda of constitutional reform because several attempts have been made. We have received several calls from people from all walks of life, politicians, including people in government, we have had people in opposition, we have had um, public servants, people belonging to civil society groups, faith-based organizations, and you can just mention them, calling for a review of the Constitution. We need to whip up the enthusiasm of the general public to revisit it and to ask ourselves this critical question about whether or not we are ready for a reform. Continue to wreak uh, havoc, and we know that that's also becoming a challenge. Uh, stay with us as we bring you more uh, in a short while. My fear is that next time it will be worse because, you know, the listen right now, the, uh, my fear is that even one side of the wall I think is weakening because it went to about knee level at that point. So any help just erode closer to the building. And you're welcome back. Now, rains continue to wreak havoc and disrupt many activities in the greater Accra region. This morning's rain flooded many streets in Accra at Tesano. The rains took over several meters of the roads, making it difficult for commuters. Commuters had to endure heavy traffic for at least four hours as the Tessano police uh, worked to dry the roads. Michael Ashale visited the area earlier today. We are right in front of the Ghana Telecom University College, GTUC, uh, where there's a huge traffic buildup because of this portion of the road. It's flooded owing to the rains that came just a few hours ago. Some of the commuters and residents we spoke to tell us that this is a normal issue. Every time it rains, it collects here and there's a huge traffic build up. Some of the people tell us the traffic is as far as the Achimota overhead. Uh, Make I talk to you small. Uh, I mean, th this, this problem, it be normal? No, 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 no. The day, every day, day, every time, if it rains, then this place there is, is get stuck. You see that the car is there stuck. Yeah. How, how, far, how far does the traffic go? Uh, up to Achimota. This is how we, how, how, how we go. Uh, this thing, unless the government look after the drainage, the gutters, there are more sun inside. Okay. You get me? Yes. Okay. They should get the workers so that they will remove the sun and the drainage will pass. Because this thing, it, it has continuous over almost three years ago. Yes. I always use this road. You get it from Fadama to Circle. Always I use this road. How serious is, is the traffic here? How serious is it? Oh, it's too bad, it's too bad. It's too bad, the traffic is too bad. Ordinarily, that vehicle will be discharging um, effluence from toilet facilities, but it's here I'm um, trying to suck away the water that has collected on this portion of the road onto the other side. Some commuters earlier now tried to find some, told us that uh, the, the drains very close to this portion of the highway is filled to the brim with silt, sand, so it makes it impossible when it rains for the water to flow. Um, I'll try to cross here um, pretty shortly. I'll try to cross. 
when you came, how was the place looking like? Oh, the place was uh, well, over flat, over flat. Plenty of water was around. Like, so they were giving us pressure because we had to start from our motor. We were even working at a long place. They, who, who called you? Uh, the police have who called us. The, the police from uh, Tessano? From Tessano, yeah. They called you that yeah. this is the situation here. Yeah. Um, so, since you, how long have you been here? Oh, we were here like 7 o'clock in the morning. Seven. Yes, yeah, seven eight. That should be an, more than an hour, yeah, close to two hours ago. Close to two hours ago, yeah. Wow. Okay, so uh, what, what exactly are you doing? What, what exactly are you doing? Okay, like we are pulling the water out and just display it outside uh, for the traffic to be less. Because of that, that's why there's a plenty of traffic here. The okay. cars can't pass through, so we are here to help and yeah. pull the water out. So that the cars how, how long is it going to take for you to for completely uh, I mean, suck away all this water? Okay, for now, we, we can spend like six hours more here. Yeah. Hours. Yeah, yeah, because wow. because of how. So what are my shoes? <laughs> okay, what I know is that it seems like this gutter is free, okay. but this one is not all that free. Okay. So we are happy. What we are standing on? Yeah, this one is it's not free. There's okay. plenty standing inside, and this is not even not the first time. It's like they used to call us. Okay. Whatever it's it rained for long, I used to pass. So we are transferred from here to the other gutter. I know that this gutter is free and it's moving frequently. So we are transferred from here to this place. At Laboni, residents living close to a storm drain fear for their lives and properties whenever it rains. The drain is filled with tree locks and silt. Homes close to the drains are were flooded. Some of the residents allege the logs were left there by unscrupulous persons. The residents fear the West uh, as more rains are expected in the coming days. Michael Ashali visited one of such homeowners who wants the drain to be desilted as soon as possible. When it was raining, some of the homeowners around this drain tell me it was life or death. They had to fight to save their possession, their vehicles, and even their lives. I will speak to some of them. My name is Mrs. Rebo. I've been living here since 2007. And there's this big storm drain between just behind my wall and then Aquinas, behind the Aquinas Secondary School. And um, it's really huge. We haven't had any problem like this before. But about two, three months ago, some huge trees were cut along the storm drain. The tree trunks were actually dumped into the drain. Because what happened is that the tree trunks now have moved from the top to the bridge. And because of the bridge, it's stuck there and it has collected all the debris that has gone through the drain. So water cannot go through at all. Yesterday, during the downpour in the middle of the night, it overflowed into my house, it came into the car, it came into the, uh, uh, one of the rooms. As someone who lives very close to the storm drain, how much of a worry is, is this situation? How, how troubling is it? It's very troubling. In fact, because it happened when it rained two weeks ago, when it started raining last night, I could not sleep. Our concern was to move the cars to a higher level. So, I mean, the whole place was covered, but at least we were able to move the car a little to avoid the water from really going in. And all now, for hours, commuters on the Accra Tema motorway uh, were stuck in traffic when a truck carrying liquefied petroleum gas overturned in the middle lane of the road. The driver, who sustained minor injuries, was sent to the hospital for treatment. Fire service officials who are still at the accident scene transforming uh, actually transferring the gas into uh, another truck to avoid any possible explosion. Say they were, uh, there were actually no casualties. Nana Minta Nano is the assistant divisional uh, officer at the Tema motorway fire station. Around um, 0127 hours, we had a call. Um, reporting an incident on the motor, that's an accident involving a daft gas tanker with registration number JN4513-21. And upon reaching here, that's 01.47 a.m. hours. I um, realized that the tanker had capsized at the divisional island of the Tema motorway. The, um, the driver wasn't that injured, but he has been rushed to the hospital upon arrival. And currently, um, when we came, our men took charge of the traffic situation. Whilst awaiting police assistance, um, we've had our friends from the Ghana Police Service also assisting with the traffic situation as well. And currently, 
Um, they are trying to transfer the bulk from the accident tanker to the one that you can see standing there. And as of now, we don't know the content because of how the um, tank has turned down. But then I believe since they started for a while, by this time, we, we should be getting somewhere. I've spoken to the tanker, those in charge of the tankers, and they are assuring me that it will be done soon. No, we don't think it should pass. Um, now it's um, around uh, 3.42, so we are estimating by 5 we should be out of here. But then I'll still be getting in touch with them so that they will be able to brief me on the latest update that they also have concerning the transfer of the gas. Well, let's stay on this a while longer. Joining us on the phone lines now for more updates is the operations officer for the Tema Motorway Fire Service, Nana Minta Nano. Good evening to you, sir. Many thanks uh, for joining us. Can we know the latest update on the situation? Have you completed the transfer exercise? Um, okay, as of now, um, what we've been able to do is we've been able to transfer part of the contents in the tank onto a... Um, onto a different tanker. And then what we are doing is uh, the weight in the tanker, the tank that has fallen down, has reduced. So we will be able to get a towing car to be able to lift it off from the divisional island of the Temamoto Way. Mm. Uh, so what arrangement are you rolling out to avoid any possible disaster? Okay, um, we have a water tanker and a tender here standing by for any eventuality. There are men on the ground also assisting in traffic control. Mm. And then we are waiting for the lower, low bed to bring the machine that will be able to lift the fallen tanker off the divisional island. Uh, all right then, but, but what should drivers be on the lookout for as they ply this uh, road? Okay, they should have adhered to safety protocols. You know, some we are directing, but then it seems they don't care. I, 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 just, I just don't get it. We keep directing them. Some would get there, be watching, and even veering off the road. We are advising the general public to adhere to safety protocols. When the sea service personnel on sea, they should just listen to us so that we'll be able to run a smooth operation. All right, then, uh, we'll have to leave it there. But if you're using the Accra Tema motorway stretch, you'd have to be uh, cautious. We understand that a tanker uh, has um, had an accident on that stretch, and you would have to be cautious as you're using that uh, stretch. That's the advice uh, from the fire service as well. We'll bring you some updates later on. But for the fear of losing their pregnancies, many pregnant women in the Ahafo region have refused to accept COVID-19 vaccines. Only 187 pregnant women in the region have so far been vaccinated. The regional health director, Dr. Kwabna Boating Bwachi, says this situation is worrying. At a media engagement uh, in one of the areas, uh, Dr. Bwachi says that they will uh, have vaccination spots at various antenatal clinics and uh, appeal to pregnant women to avail themselves for vaccination. Lifting the COVID-19 restrictions in Ghana, according to health authorities, does not mean the country is out of the woods. Ghana Health Service has a target to vaccinate 20 million people in Ghana by mid-2022, in the Hafun region with no active COVID-19 case, only 26.2% out of the estimated 451,548 people are fully vaccinated. Out of this number, only 187 are pregnant women, despite the vaccination services, including mobile vaccination teams in all six districts in the region. Regional Health Director Dr. Kwabina Bwaten Bwache at a media engagement in Fidium on the COVID-19 vaccination campaign said the approved vaccines are safe for them and their unborn children, irrespective of their gestational age. He urged pregnant women to avail themselves as the health directorate steps up measures to vaccinate more people. Currently now, pregnant women in Ghana have been included in those eligible for vaccination, irrespective of the number of months of pregnancy or technically the gestational uh, age can't get vaccinated with Pfizer or Moderna. And it's been proved that these vaccines are safe and will not affect the outcome of the pregnancy 
and also not affect their fertility in any way. We have vaccinations in all the facilities. But as an add-on, we are going to think through having a spot at the antenatal clinics. Yes, so that I can have a dinner hour, but the ANC, there should be some day to talk about it and vaccines there ready for our pregnant women. So that's what our foraging we are going to think through and implement. He said for the service to achieve the vaccination target, a monthly campaign in eight second round is underway to improve the vaccine intake in the Hafo region. National COVID-19 vaccination this campaign, DAP, NAGVAS, have been instituted. It's an important and critical step to reduce hesitancy and improve vaccine up to towards achieving the target of having 20 million persons fully vaccinated by mid-2022. This will be a great milestone on the journey to attainment of herd immunity against the COVID-19. The second round of the NAGVA series commenced on the 21st of April 22, and in fact was supposed to end on 25th of April. But it's still ongoing because the vaccination must be done every day. If a person is eligible for a booster, any of these five vaccines available could be given as a booster, regardless of the brand taken initial. Dr. Bwachi also urged the media to help promote positive behavior and lifestyle and strengthen the public trust and confidence in the COVID-19 vaccine. Precious Semevo, Joy News, Shidim. Now, it is a competition of intense query of scientific knowledge of students, from biology to chemistry to physics and maths. Uh, students are showcasing what they have learnt in class. What if there were no science classes at all? Well, in the Mono East region, the lack of science facilities is forcing stu school uh, students uh, to present general art students for the 2020 to edition of the National Science and Mass Quiz. What are the results? Manuel Cranti now reports. Sounds of jubilant supporters of Ameyao Akumfi SHS which won the final contest in the Bono East Regional Qualifiers for the 2022 National Science and Maths Quiz. This jubilation was however lost on several other schools which had come for the competition. Like farmers with no farm inputs, the general arts students from Kwateng and Koma SHS were simply no match for their counterparts from Kentampo SHS in the science contest. Here's why. If we have um, a pure science lab, a chemistry lab, we can do better. It was the training was very difficult, or oh, it was tiring. Jacqueline and her teammates were at a distant second, with 27 points behind Kintampo SHS. But as she explains, this performance was a result of sheer imagination. It was all theory, no practical learning. But sometimes when they talk of it, then we will cast our mind, like we will imagine it so that you know that this is what they mean. You see, we see the pictures in books and those ones, so when we look at them, then we, we try to, to capture it and then to see how the results, after doing it, how the results will be. Like distillation, um, the combination of compounds. See, most things like this, we were supposed to do it practically. But any time that they say, they talk anything like that, then we imagine uh -huh, so that we, we could see whether we will experience or we will feel the outcome. There are no pure science teachers and no science labs in their school. A common situation includes the health of the about 30 schools in the region. But we don't have science today. We are not doing general science as we speak. Uh, because of our limited resources and uh, infrastructure, that's not permitting us to. So, um, the students you saw there representing the school are our students. In fact, it, is, it, it was a very Herculean task, very difficult one as such. But how can this be cured? Um, my appeal to the government is to come to our aid so that the, um, you should help us to get the facilities. So that learning, even if we get them, learning will be very, very easy for us. You just see, it's just imagination. And imagination has, has helped. 
So if we get the facilities, I think we will do very, very, very much greater than what we did today. The Ghana Education Service says it has begun evaluating the strengths of these schools to aid in the provision of labs and other science resources for them to begin rolling out science courses. Manuel Cranting, Joy News, Sunyani. Well, so you're still watching Joy News Prime. We'll be back after this short break. Well, so it's time now to check out what's happening in the world of entertainment. The man IB is here. Yes, and the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth, celebrated her birthday. Oh, okay. Yes, on That's Tuesday. where we're starting from. Yeah, let's start from there. <laughs> let's start from there. And it was, apart from the fact that it was her 90th birthday, it was also the 70th anniversary of her coronation ever right. since she was coronated. And I happened to have a one-on-one -on -one with Her Excellency, the British High Commissioner to Ghana, Harriet uh, Thompson and she was saying that she wants to make it a thing that she will make Ghanaian artists a household name in UK just like Stormzy and Wizkid are. What's the showbiz relationship between Ghana and UK being like? So it's really strong and what I would love to do while I'm here is strengthen that still further. So there are Ghanaian artists traveling to the UK all the time to perform and they're doing really well. So I'm, I'm very much enjoying talking with people in the music industry to find out how we can boost that so that the Ghanaian artists are up there with the Stormzy's, the Wiz Kids, these names who are household names in the UK, the Ghanaian ones should be there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fascinating name. Yeah, very, very, very. Stormzy. <laughs> well, Stormzy, <laughs> Wizkid, they are indeed household names yeah, in the UK. Right. But our Honourable Minister, our Sector Minister was there. I'm, when I'm talking about Sector Minister, the Tourism, Art and Culture, oh. in the person of Honourable uh, Wal Ibrahim Mohammed. And he is saying that UK is actually the gateway for Ghana to Europe and with respect to, I mean, exporting our showbiz and our cultural um, things from Ghana. In, in July this year, we are going to have Ghana in the park in London, where our music, our culture, raised about 10,000 people are coming to showcase Ghana and sell Ghana to the UK market. We launched Destination Ghana in UK, where we are expecting 1 million visitors every year from Europe. And UK will give us 300,000 of the people. So for us, music, food, dance, fruit, culture is our export to the world. And UK is our gateway to Europe. Then that is that is a, a lot of good numbers there. Yeah, it is. We are expecting one million visitors this year okay. from tourism, and three hundred thousand from the United Kingdom. Wow. That is good money. One million gives us three billion dollars. Each tourist spends about three thousand dollars a visit. So I spend three billion at least by end of this year. Interesting calculations. Yeah, he has a lot of numbers to give out every right. time you talk to him. And those you always have to be on the lookout for the numbers. Yes, and those numbers seem to be generating some money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, have you heard Kev Kevin's boy Down Flat? I've heard that. Great music. Okay, good. good. I'm down flat for the music <laughs> itself. <laughs> Well, it never occurred to me that he could actually use under 20 minutes to, I mean, get the song done. But that is what he said happened to him. He says, by far, Down Flat is the fastest song he's ever recorded. Down Flat um, was, was made like in less than like 20 minutes. That was, that's my fastest song. So I think the song came from above and do it, its thing because... The, the budget for the video and the energy when we started promoting it was low. When you when you take go back to my songs, how I push my songs, I didn't even trust it like this. You get me? So down flat came in and it's doing its thing, like you know, mad thing. Yeah, man. The song itself, they they doing thing. No, be me. I can't just even explain because Charlie, every each and every day we see another thing. Did you envisage this? Did you see this? Did you foresee this? I see this coming all the time when I release every song, but not like this. Quick like this. You know me. I drop songs, take time for people to, you know, but this one, it's just three months old. And the, the things the song is doing, each and every day I wake up, like, I see different things, like different level, different, you know. Well, Ivy, this is what I'll tell you. If you're an upcoming artist, don't try this at home. <laughs> don't try it. 
<laughs> you don't have to try it anyway. Not at all. It's, it's, it's the fastest song he's ever recorded yeah. in his entire career, and this, the song is actually. You may try that, places. and it will not work for you. It at won't all. work. <laughs> well, that is how I bring the curtain yes, down on indeed. what's happening in the world of showbiz. Ivy, always a pleasure mm -hmm. seeing you here on Join News Prime. But that's all we have for you in this package. My name is Blessed Suga. We have more news for you at myjoyonline.com. Thank you.